Okay, so I'm T.W. Cook. I'm the Vice President of Engineering here at Coringo, and I want to talk briefly about swarm health analysis. So one of our challenges is that we've got this swarm cluster here that's really a federation of embedded systems with no real UI. There's no central point of control. Those could be anywhere in the world with perhaps nobody local monitoring them, uh, but we need to monitor the health and be able to diagnose issues with that. So the next slide. So we tried to take a very swarm-centric uh, architecture centric view of this, where we made each of those individual swarm nodes responsible for its own health reporting. What they do is they individually report back to Coringo via internet every 24 hours. Those raw reports are stored in a swarm cluster here. We've got every one of them back to the beginning of time. And the metadata that we've been talking about, we extract the metadata on the way in that we care about and, and tag them with that. That lets us use swarm search to manage finding them by date, by a, a cluster a license, uh, the customer, um, a variety of things. And then we aggregate those in post-processing into cluster views, because each of those nodes reports ind individually, but we're really interested in what's going on in a particular storage cluster. So we post-process that, and then we take the results of that and use that what use Swarm Portal, which Eric has been showing you, to provide access to that. Part of that is so that we can find those reports into, internally but part of that, we actually make them available to our customers. So if you've got a swarm cluster, uh, the current release gives you a link that will, sh will bring you, it's actually served right out of swarm portal, uh, access to your own health report from your cluster, which is this aggregated, analyzed view of how stuff. Much, about how much data is actually reported on a daily basis for a cluster? Is it based on a number of servers? Or? Yeah, so basically each one is, basi is doing effectively the equivalent of an SMP, SNMP walk except it's packaged as JSON, it's compressed and encrypted, and then it's pushed to us. So depending on the size of the cluster, bigger clusters have more data per node, but you're looking at uh, you know, a few hundred kilobytes maybe uh, per, per node per day. And it's spread out over 24 hours, so the, the load on the cluster from both computation and, and data transport is pretty insignificant. I would say some of the, you know, some of the more uh, startup storage vendors these days are, are are doing a lot more with this sort of health uh, information than, than uh, what you guys are showing mm. to some extent. I mean, that, A, they're taking a lot more data off the machines, and yeah. B, they're allowing people to actually run data analytics on it and stuff like that. It's pretty, getting very sophisticated. From It is, and we're, we're actually pursuing multiple paths. One of the things you'll see in future releases is a lot more of this built into the consoles or an, an, an extension of what Eric has been showing you. The other thing we'd also do, that we're, I'm not really showing you here, we use uh, cloud log analysis to do a lot of that stuff. So we've been able to do things like, we have a customer, we were able to tell them that on these 15 disks over here, you need to upgrade the firmware because you're getting a lot lower performance than you are on the same yeah. same kind of disk with different firmware. So there's really a lot of things under the hood. We're looking at a, an extensive amount of data about both their configuration and what's going on. I'm afraid we've got two minutes. We were okay, go to the, <laughs> okay. I was going to, hey, that's fine, we'll go here. So this is looking at, um, uh, at the portal. <coughs> I've got different, cluster, different uh, collections here. Remember, these are live searches. So I can look at the health reports for the last 30 days. I can look at uh, by license, by customer. I'm going to look at internal clusters because I can show you those. Our, our customers' proprietary data is obviously proprietary. Why don't you run down to, uh, to Jim, if you would. There we go. So this is basically a, a consult, this is not the health report, but rather the analysis. And this is the version that a customer would see. So this is available to the customer. We've got metadata on it that's the license information, but this is sort of a summarized view. Talks about basically information about the cluster, default erasure coding, license information, uh, the cluster load, external versus internal. You remember the, the health processor is maybe moving things around to rebalance or to optimize. So there's an internal load and an external load uh, in terms of rates. The responses, almost all of them were 200 HTTP responses you'd expect. This cluster has got a lot of different types of streams. So we look at the number of streams, their space usage. We can look at each of the individual nodes. In this case, it's a bit of a hodgepodge with one and two terabyte drives on a bunch of old Dell Blackfords. I can look at the load over the last 24 hours, uh, the historic load. I can look at the health processor status. So for each one of those individual nodes, the health processor basically goes in the background and looks at data integrity, uh, looking for things like BitRod. It makes decisions about how to rebalance to optimize performance in the cluster. Did, did I understand correctly, 
you can specify attributes at the object layer rather than like at the container layer. So like re replication right. and erasure. That's right. So when I store an object, I could store an object and say, I want this to be stored with reps3, even though the default for the cluster or the container might be something different. I can also use life points to say, I want to change that in the after future. Time. So I can say, I want it to be three reps for the first 30 days, but after that, you know, go to erasure coding 4.2. And after two years, I want to delete it. It can, you can automatically clean up even. So you can define that policy at the time you write. So per object, uh, but this is just showing you the defaults on the cluster level. So if you don't specify, it's going to take the cluster default. With this, with the health data and also with the metadata around a lot of the objects, is this something that I need to use your dashboard to get to? Or are there APIs that I can So that's a great to? question. Both, as it turns out. Okay. So we were providing a pre-analyzed pre version, which is what you're looking at here. Mm -hmm. the, the raw data is actually available to you uh, as a, basically a JSON. So you can go to any individual, individual swarm load Swarm node and get it to give you a snapshot of its data at any given time. You can aggregate that, you can look at a particular. Uh, so, all the raw data for this is available uh, just via H a single HTTP call, and you get it back as JSON, which you can easily uh, analyze from anything. How about like audit reports and stuff like that? Do you guys provide, like, if, if my users are storing credit card data or social security numbers <coughs> or any kind of so we don't necessarily know the content, but as far as the activity, um, we were able to log who stored what uh, and when. Uh, we have a great deal of granularity. We don't ever really look inside the object. because that's oh, so you don't ever do that. So you can define like a policy that said, like I'm thinking like PCI or something like that, where I could define a policy that doesn't allow me to write data that contains a social security number or credit card number or uh, we don't do, we don't do body inspection inside okay. of the object. So, okay. so when we talk policy, it's just not, the object. You're just wrapping just, around. Yeah, the it's object. just data. That's to right. Us. Okay. Okay. Fair enough. Just. to add on to that question, is it possible? Did I say, did I say something wrong with just data? <laughs> just data. I meant that. No, that's my. That's my. I have to respond to that. I meant that. I meant that. I know what you meant. I meant that as a good thing because that means that you're not restricted in terms of what data that's you right. can write to. That's right. It's not going to air bucket. <laughs> there was one more question. Did you say yeah. that there's um, no, um, and I'm not sure what the term is, but scrubbing of the data over time to ver verify that it's readable and accessible and the erasure coding works and stuff like that? There is. Do that or don't do that? The health processor actually does that. So you can define. So, so it would like scan all the data in a, in a, in a, in a cluster over some course of that's days, right. weeks, whatever, to see that's that right. all the data. You have some control over that. You can you can tune how much, how much cycles you want to spend on that. But ultimately, we're going to go through and do a checksum on every single thing uh, that's stored there and determine if, if for whatever reason it's corrupted, we're going to restore an additional copy from one of the other replicas or reconstruct it. That happens automatically. It's highly tunable, although the defaults turn out to work for most people. So that basically happens by magic in the background. Yeah, so when companies store their files locally on site, mm -hmm. you know, you can add products on like Baronis to do auditing like he was uh, talking about. Are there any companies that you guys are partnering with to maybe do something similar like that or, I mean, to take it to the next level in terms of the auditing or are you looking at doing that? There, we, we certainly are looking at post-processing of information and making post-processing um, Ryan, Ryan was talking about software development kit. We want to make we want to make it easier to mm -hmm. to integrate into that. And collections become a good way for you to say, I'm interested in a collection, or I'm interested in data that matches the following the, the following metadata. So we don't have any products like that to, at currently, um, mm -hmm. but we want to. We're we're making the 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 data available for that kind of uh, for that kind of analytics. Okay, so you're kind of doing that yeah. built in or right. going to right. because organizations that care about files changing uh, data moving etc need need to have that information to keep an eye on what's, what's the other happening. thing you want to do which is similar is you want to be able to go and, and extract metadata after the fact and then annotate uh, the object with it so mm -hmm. um, if you wanted to you are ingesting by some mechanism, but then you maybe have some post-processing phase that goes through and extracts that and tags it. So we see that as coming up as, as going to be increasingly important. And we've you worked with tag yeah. PCI. Yeah, that's what stuff. I'm thinking. I mean, and I don't know if I zoned out for a second or not, but 
Were you saying like with the SDK, I might be able to write my own yeah. way to extract the data yeah, absolutely. or look at that data? Mm -hmm. so. and, and we've worked with partners to do things like post-processing, sure. virus okay, scanning, you know, post-processing yeah. of, of right. all kinds of data. I mean, that's that's okay. a primary. So an integration that's storing medical data, there's enormous amounts of tags that are possible right. for that. Those can be extracted, and as you push it in through the SDK, you can go ahead and attach those as metadata. So I can I can watch it as it's coming. If you're building your own integration, you have total control over the over the ability to do that.